This is Silicus. This is my SR2 build. I'm going to go over a little bit about uh, how to put on uh, the water block. That's right here. EK FB SR2 nickel. Um, whenever I have this to remove paste, and I've got a little bit of coolant that I've whopped up from some of my other systems, some q-tips. These are not the best q-tips to use. You should use the ones that are like the makeup ones, the ones without the uh, huge cotton swab at the top. A little bit of alcohol. Be careful with alcohol if you're going to use it. Make sure it all dries off because if not you will short circuit your system. Yay. Alright, the next bit, here's the water block part of it. I will do this in uh, steps. This will be my first one and then I will do... First thing I did is I removed this from it. It went originally like that. There's 14 screws on the back of the board itself. When you move to the back of the board, they will all be raised. They look kind of like this. They have a little spring. So when you remove the spring off of it, well, they you can tell each one because it has this. And the only other one that makes a slight difference is another spring-like screw that comes off the side. And it looks like that. Come off the back, there'll be two of these. You simply pry them off, as well as this. They'll just pop off. Make sure whenever you do remove all 14 screws that you're hanging on to the back of the SR2's block. Right, this thing will come tumbling off like it did for me. Not a fun experience having a $600 motherboard thing fall off and you hear crash, clang. <clears throat> I made this motherboard plate for it. It's really shiny and glossy and kind of dirty and full of stuff. Um, but it works. This system has already been fired up previously, but I did not have the full coverage block. I got really tired of listening to this non-stop noises. Not a very pleasant experience. <clears throat> when you have a water cooling system that's quiet. The next thing I did is I applied and cleaned off the thermal paste and then applied some Arctic Silver 5. Um, this is my best stuff. It does take cure time. Make sure whenever you put apply it on that you give it some time to cure. Well, elsewise you'll end up, um, well, uh, not getting your best performance. It has a cure time. Give it some burn in time, run it non-stop for a few days and that should be good. That way you can get your potential for overclocks. What this basically does is smells in the fills in the uh, like the micro gaps so that uh, you get better contact. This goes for anything. Same thing with CPUs. There's lots of different debates on how to apply thermal paste. Sometimes they say to do it in an X. Sometimes a big glob in the center. Some people go really gung-ho and get a razor blade and like finally like comb it over. That's great. If you have time to do that more power to you. I kind of just put a glob in the center for small ones and for other ones I make an X pattern and then another X inside of that so kind of like this one here as you can see I've drawn one X and then I drew a cross in the center and generally that's enough. The object is to cover it. If, if you're curious you can always set it on there and pull it off and make sure one other thing is make sure it doesn't bleed over the edge onto the actual motherboard itself just to, so you don't cause any shorts. <coughs> um, this concludes this little bit. I'll start here in a moment with the next step.